Hello everybody and welcome along to another cosplay tutorial, episode number two by Me Simulation for the Nation. Today we're going to be focusing on field work. Uh, now this is very similar across the range despite uh, the different type of implement you have on the back of the tractor or even on the front. Uh, but the principle is very much the same and what we're going to do is show you on this little field here exactly what we need to do. First thing is, uh, as always though, you need to jump into your tractor. Uh, you need to pull up towards the vicinity of the field, as we have done here. Uh, what we're going to do is quickly just bring up our map in the bottom right left corner so we can see which field we're uh, next to, that's going to be important. Uh, next thing you want to do is open up your course play navigation menu, so that's right click on the mouse. Uh, that brings us up to our course play control. Now, as we touched on last time, along the bottom here are uh, various different forms of um, of courses, variations and types of courses that we're going to be required to use. Uh, today we are going to focus on this one here which has the zigzag lines, this, the gear and the tools. Uh, and when you hover over it, this is uh, type ca uh, category type field work. So when we click on that one, as you'll see it opens up a lot more icons along the top. The icon that we need to be looking into here is the very right right one with the uh, kind of snaky zigzag arrow. Uh, once you click onto there, it gives us up a whole load of different options. Now this is where we define how the, the vehicle is going to uh, traverse across the field, how it's going to work the field, uh, and, and various different settings like that. Now there are two ways to do this, I'm going to show you both ways, uh, the old generation way and the new style way. Uh, so we're going to start with the old one. First thing you need to do is let the course player know exactly which field we are in. Uh, so we have field edge path here. You're going to click on the arrow. Now what this will do brilliantly is it recognizes which fields you own in game already uh, and then will allow you to uh, select between those fields that you own. So in this case, we're, as you can see in the menu in the bottom left corner here, we're on the, uh, we're on the northeast corner of field 25. So we're going to click up to 25. Next option is we need to let the vehicle or the course player know just how wide our implement we're pulling is. You can do this manually if you want to make it a little bit narrower. Sometimes I would do that. Let's assume that the vehicle, the implement is three meters wide. Uh, sometimes I'll have it set to 2.9 meters just so when you turn around corners it, it doesn't miss quite as much. Um, or if you want to automatically calculate it, you just click on the calculator button and it will automatically set it uh, to the working width of that vehicle. Uh, now this is where it starts to get a little bit more specific about the, the field in question. We have start and location, start and direction. So you can choose to start the vehicle, uh, start the course play route from any corner of the field. Uh, with a nice square field like this it makes it a little bit easy because this is aligned with the north-south uh, compass bearings. Uh, so when you, for example, when you click here it will give you current vehicle position, which will be where we're standing right now. Uh, it will give you the southwest corner, uh, the northwest corner, the northeast and of course the southeast as well. So if you really want to pick and choose which area you want to start and therefore which area you want to finish in, that's the best way to do it. But what we're going to do uh, we are. Oh, we can even select the position on a map. Uh, but right now we're going to choose current vehicle position because we've done this. The course player also automatically knows which direction the vehicle is facing in, and so which direction the course player is going to start from. Uh, however, if you have an idea that you want to drive north and south, for example, you can change the starting direction to north south. Uh, you could use longer steps for fields that are a little bit more curved, um, or you could even, if you want to. Uh, you can drive the tractor into a certain sp uh, angle uh, and it will detect that degree and that will be the angle of which you drive. Uh, but we're going to just go automatic there, so it's going to automatically choose. Uh, would you re uh, return to first point? This is something that you don't necessarily need to do, however, let's say if you're starting at the gateway of a field, uh, you set your course up and you want your tractor to end up back there, by activating that, the course play will navigate in that exact route, so that's how it will, it will finish up where we started. Uh, for this though, that's not really important to given the design of this field, so we're going to leave that uh, deactivated. Headlands are always something that you want to consider, particularly when you're on a, um, a British style map, for example, where we have hedge rows. Uh, again, for this specific map here, it's probably not very important to us because we have no field boundaries uh, to kind of speak of at this stage. Uh, however, should you want headlands, you can include them, you can add as many as you want. Uh, this little section here, this will determine right now that we're going to do the headland first and then move on to the rows. However, if you click on the arrow, 
it can determine if you want to do the rows first before clicking onto the headland. So for example, if you're cultivating or plowing and you want to do the interior of the field first, that's the, st that's the method you'd want to choose. Uh, but we're not going to have any headlands. We don't need them in this uh, specific activity. Bypass islands is important if you have any trees or telegraph poles in your field. What that will do is it will reckon when it scans the field, it will identify those nodes for those specific objects uh, and navigate around them. Unlike, say, hide worker, for example, uh, that years gone by uh, would just crash into a telegraph pole and wouldn't proceed. The course play will actively uh, navigate around that with sufficient width to allow your um, to allow your working implement to sail past there as well. Multiple tools uh, is something that we're not going to be needing for this exact uh, example, but what it will do, if you add multiple tools on there, that means that if you have two tractors and two cultivators in this example, uh, they would be working side by side. Uh, so it means that the lead tractor, this number one for example here, will um, will miss a pass every time it, it comes uh, moves across one because it knows that directly behind there, there is another machine following. That is going to be something that we're going to look into in a little bit more depth in the more advanced uh, course play tutorial. This one right now though is simply just to get over the basics. Uh, so once you have this done, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the um, funny little zigzag arrow here. You click on there and as you can see we have two boxes here already. We have a start arrow and over here there is a stop arrow. Uh, if you would like to see the course in a bit more detail, you can click on the I here by course generation. And there you go. It gives us a nice easy course. Now one great thing is if you click on the course as well, you can drag it around and move it somewhere where it's less in your way. Um, so as you can see, because of the, the field shape, it's a very straightforward course. If you'd like to see each individual node, uh, we can do that by clicking onto the, the gear menu here. Uh, right here we have show waypoints. This is uh, beginning waypoints, end waypoints, and this is the middle. Right now it's disabled. We do that though. Now you can begin to see the entire course. And if we zoom out, you can see it looks pretty much like it does on the map there. So that's uh, what our tractor is going to follow. Uh, but we don't want to see that. And now, what we can do, as always, we can always save this course. So we're going to uh, click on the save button. The reason why you'd save this is, let's say it's a big field, we start it now, but then you quit the game, you want to come back into it later and finish it off. So you don't have to reset this, you can just reload the course in. We're going to hit save. We're going to type in the name, so this was field F25. I like to call it field work. Fieldwork 1. And the reason I say Fieldwork 1 is because I'm going to have various different widths of implements. So 1 being the shortest, or the narrowest, and working out width. Then we're going to hit save. And that is saved there now. So if we ever want to find that course that activated again, uh, we come into here, you've got Fieldwork 1. This is your library. The globe it will always be your library where your courses are saved. To load up a course in question, you click on the load course button here, and there you go. You're good to go. We've already got loaded in now, so we don't need that right now. So you've got your course loaded up there, you feel like you're ready to go. I'm going to get rid of that window. All we need to do here, uh, we have dry, this is our kind of course control really. So we have um, a few options here from where we'd like to start the course. We're going to go at the first waypoint. And the reason we're going to do that is because we want it to start right here. If, like I mentioned earlier, if you stop halfway through a field, you can always click this to current waypoint, which will bring up the one, the kind of position of the course we're in. Or uh, next closest, again, very self-explanatory. Uh, and also nearest waypoint. So it, the course label will search for the waypoint you happen to be near and will continue the course from there. We're going to stick with the first waypoint though. Right now it has AI driver, so we are going to click on drive. And as you see, he is cultivating away. So what we're going to see now, uh, when we start the driver, there are a few configurations we can change still. Um, so we can have stop at last point of trigger exit, which we want to, like we touched on in the previous episode. It means it will stop at that point over there. And as we're going to see, he's going to turn around. And we have got uh, very simple options in how we're going to turn. Uh, turn on field is activated right now. So as you can see, he is uh, reversing around on the field. If you, hit, uh, if you hit deactivated, it will of course turn on the grass around the edge there. Now this first pass is kind of overlapping themselves. The reason it's doing that is just to get the, due to the width of the field, the width of the implement we're using, it's just kind of organizing themselves. 
Um, so we'll see by the time we get to the next pass here that we will take a full, full width. So we'll just watch him turn around one more time here and then we'll see that he's good to go. Other options, as we click onto this, um, uh, onto the little sliders here, the mixer menu as I like to call it, we have a few different options as to how it can turn. So this is our turn and circle, our radius, uh, particularly important if you have various different trailed implements where, like, where the machine will do like a light bulb turn really. And as you can see, he's kind of taking the full width there. So you can try and, my best uh, best idea for you guys would be to try and just play with that to begin with, fiddle out, what, uh, adjust them to see what you prefer really. We're gonna go to speed limits. Speed limits don't really apply too much when you're in the field because you have limitations as to what each implement will be able to allow the tractor to work at, like a max speed. But you can adjust those to suit um, or if you have completely uh, recorded an entire course, uh, you can choose from recording and uh, course play will stick to the exact speed during that recording. Uh, as we go into settings, there's a few more settings here we can look into. Um, these are again uh, a little bit more uh, to be kind of configured for road work, for example, where we have uh, waiting times if you're loading, for example. You don't really get a, you're not going to include waiting times when you're doing field work. Uh, and you can refuel a gas station and things like that. As we look at the tractor, uh, now you can, uh, if you, if you're using, let's say, a, a side-mounted mower, you might want to look at lane offset there, so you can adjust how the course is actually being uh, operated. That will give you a better idea as to where the the mower is in relation to the working width. We are going to come into that. That is going to be something I'm going to address as a bit more of a detailed uh, course play course. Now, as I mentioned at the very beginning, there are two ways for us to record a track here or to record a course. Uh, so we're going to go back into our little zigzag. Uh, now, the original method was to fill in all of these columns down here. The new window that is uh, brand new to FS19 involves us clicking on this gear here and it brings up advanced course generator settings. This brings up the specific window of the map and all of our configurables here. Now these are all the same as the, um, as the configuration and the settings that we went through for the manual uh, previously, but what's going to do is it's going to bring it up on this map here. So as you can see, we're going to go to field 25 again. Uh, we're going to go current vehicle position, position and automatic. Uh, headlands are none, much like last time. Bypass islands deactivated. We don't want to skip any rows. Uh, we're going to go up and down, which is what we need to do in the middle of the field. Uh, return to first point, I'm going to keep deactivated. We have no multiple tools and our working width is the same of 2.9. Once that's all in, you hit um, generate field course and as you can see, the course is generated once again on the field in question. Now that would be the same across any field here. So it gives you an idea of where we're working in the field, which is great. If I go back and I show up the course again, once again you can see that the course is generated there. So uh, it is all good to go. Uh, and that is the exact same principle, but with a much more modern, fresh feeling window. Uh, but we will let this one continue. So what we can do here, we're going to go to uh, nearest waypoint, next closest. Let's try that one. And as you can see, he's going to drive himself around somewhere. And he's going to start right back at the beginning. So away he goes. And what we'll do when we stop up the top here, I'm going to hit stop once we get there because we're going to change it from next closest to nearest to show you the difference there as well. So we'll go stop. Thank you very much, Jeff. As you can see for the course here, we have red, green arrows and we have we have red, green arrows and we have red arrows. The green arrows indicate the end of a row and the direction of turning. The red arrows suggest the beginning of the row and the direction of which the tractor will go down. So as you can see here, this is the beginning of the row and it's going to head that way. So we're going to park that there for now. Uh, we are going to go to nearest, drive course, going to unfold the cultivator there, and away he goes. So just like that, the fundamentals behind operating a um, any piece of machinery 
inside of FS19. This will work for any implement that is not a spreader, seeder, fertilizer spinner, uh, or sprayer. Uh, that is something we're going to uh, we're going to review for tomorrow's video, and uh, we will discuss how those implements work because they are a little bit different. Different. Uh, for now, though, thank you ever so much for watching. Do hit that like button if this has been useful to you or you have enjoyed it. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions you would like answering. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't done so already, do hit that subscribe button for more from me, Simulation for the Nation. Till next time, though, I'll see you later.